I forgot to unmute us after that. Okay, so software modules. So now we get to the interesting part of things. So it's interesting in that it's we're getting hands-on and finding the software on the cluster, but we hope you're not too bored because you're not actually using it for anything yet. So with so many people using the cluster and so many different versions of things installed all at the same time, you can wonder how do we keep track of it? And that is something called LMOD. So LMOD is just a name, it's pretty standard, but um, it provides the way to define the different software that's available and then activate it in your own shell. Yes, so so the software, what the LMOD basically does is that it, it basically tells the when you load one of these modules, so they are basically like shortcuts uh, in a sense uh, to like you would have in in Windows or in in Mac or somewhere. They basically define these environment variables to the operating system, so that the operating system can find the correct software and libraries at the correct places. Because we have so many different use cases, this it's not realistic that we would install. Uh, like software in the operating system itself. So the operating system for security reasons and for various other reasons is quite old itself. Uh, and and uh, because it, it needs to be well secu secure and compatible, but these uh, modules, they enable us to, to basically have uh, lots of different software, new software that's uh, then uh, available for, for the users. If you look at one of these modules, so with module show, for example, uh, let's look at the GCC compiler, for example, uh, you will see that it, it, it contains this, lots of these directives that uh, change mm -hmm. these environment variables yeah. uh, where this compiler should be found. It's not something you need to think about, but this is what basically happens underneath it. When you load a module, it changes your environment so that this software is now available in your environment. Mm -hmm. And that's why we talked about environment variables in the last shell course. So when we're debugging stuff, yes. we need to know about these variables, but otherwise you can sort of just hope it works and then ask us if it doesn't. And that's usually our problem. Mm. So uh, loading modules is, is quite simple. If you're at uh, some other university, we have some of this software uh, is, is commonly available through this FGCI consortium. Uh, and you can load them using this module load uh, FGCI common, but your cluster might have different software. Uh, CSC also uses modules. They have their own installations, but basically the same kind of commands work in every cluster. So let's say you want to load uh, a, a Python environment. You want to load a, a newer version of Python. So let's see what version we get from the operating system. Uh, so if we run which Python 3, we can see that the Python comes from user bin Python 3. Which so is the that general is the operating system installation. Yeah. And, and its version is the the version mentioned here, the 3.6.8. But if we load this Anaconda module that we have, we load this and we look at which Python now we have, you can see that it comes from this long path. And these are automatically installed by us like through this installation system that we have. Uh, so you, you don't have to care where it comes from. You just know that it's installed by us. Yeah. And I'd like to point out to everyone watching that SEMO was basically the one that built this automatic installation system. And so yeah, so you can blame me if everything, <laughs> anything goes wrong. Uh, I didn't build it completely myself, but basically um, uh, you can see that the Python version uh, here is, is newer. So we have a different Python uh, when we have this module uh, loaded. So this means that we now have this uh, one module loaded and we can see that, okay, we have this uh, 2020-05 TensorFlow 2. The, the module naming scheme 
uh, can be different in every cluster. We have our own schemes and we try to uh, describe them. For example, in the Python page, we have described this, why we have named it in such a way. But basically module load and module list, they can also be uh, done with ML. So ML is this kind of a uh, faster way of access uh, using module if you just want to like, uh, uh, you don't want to type them all the time. Okay, so now you have this Python environment set, but sometimes you might end up in a situation, say, situation where you have software loaded and, and it conflicts with some other software and you want to start from a scratch. Well, sometimes um, you just want to open a new shell to Triton but you can also purge the modules. So what it does, it, it undoes the settings that it, it, the loading did. So purge, uh, you can unload single modules as well, but it's usually better to just purge the whole thing. And, and then when you look at the software that you have loaded, you no longer have any software loaded. Uh, yeah, like mentioned here, you can unload one module, but you should be careful that you don't necessarily uh, well, uh, because like it, it should be deterministic what it does, but sometimes you might end up in a situation where you, if you do various unloads and loads, it, it's not the same as you started it with. So, so you might want to purge sometimes just to be on the safe side. Yeah. Like this uh, idea of reproducing your environments is actually quite important. Like you should always be able to purge everything and then reload stuff in the same order or have a list of the stuff that you've loaded to get back to the same point. Yeah, and this brings us to to, to like common stuff that people do is to, to put their most commonly used modules into the BAS RC uh, or BAS profile. So that whenever they log in, they get the same modules. Um, this is, of course, very usable, but it comes with the risk that you have a certain version of software loaded and you don't necessarily think about it that much. So you just have it there on the background and when stuff breaks, uh, you don't necessarily know whether it's because you have certain version of software loaded or if it's uh, like if, if the problem is caused by the software or is it, is it well, is it something that uh, yeah. could be avoided by just not loading everything? Because some of the software in installed here is not like you can't have multiple versions of Pythons at the same time, because then the Python doesn't know where it gets its stuff and it will, uh, mm -hmm. well, it will try to work around it, but eventually you might get in a, in a complicated situation. So it's a, usually a better idea to have like specialized environments where you, uh, load just the stuff you need uh, instead of loading everything that's available. Yeah. The module system, uh, it does, there are some conflicts set in the system, so it doesn't allow you to load certain modules uh, at the same time as other modules, but sometimes it doesn't, it doesn't do like completely dependency check or anything like that. So you might get like conflicting modules if you load everything that's available. But okay, let's, let's try it out. You can try it yourself if you have a terminal open as well. So where is MATLAB in Triton, for example? Let's try MATLAB. Command not found. Okay, this is a bad cluster. I don't want to use this. There's no MATLAB here. So obviously we have MATLAB installed. And to find MATLAB, uh, we recommend using this spider command. So, so spider is basically uh, goes through the web of all of the software. I don't know why it's called spider, but uh, maybe it hunts, hunts it down in the web, web of software, but yeah. uh, anyways, it will, it will give you the versions of software that are available called MATLAB. When you run this, it will produce you with a bunch of MATLAB versions that are, are, are available. Uh, so now a good question is that what happens if you load just MATLAB? Uh, you can see that there are plenty of uh, versions there. So which version do you think you will get? Let's see. You get the newest one. Uh, that's pretty, uh, well, 
one would think that you will always get the newest one, it will usually take the one with the, well, sorting, from sorting, it will get the one with the highest uh, number. So basically, in in here we have the uh, 2020B, that's the highest number, so it will get get you that version. But it might be a good idea to check, because sometimes you might end up in a situation where you have, let's say, software installed against MATLAB, like a MEX file or something, and you want to make certain that the MATLAB version doesn't change when we install a newer version of MATLAB. So yeah, you will, when you load point. a certain certain version of MATLAB, you always want a certain version of MATLAB. So you might want to say module load, let's say MATLAB 2019B, and this will always give you that certain version. And you can see right. here that the module system changes the software. It sees that, okay, you already had a MATLAB loaded. Let's let's switch it to another version of MATLAB. Yeah. But basically, it's a good idea to, if you first uh, want to try out stuff, uh, just load the software. But if you intend of doing some work against that system, and you think that it's uh, important to keep the system reproducible, then keep the versions intact. Like keep the version, yeah. like lock in certain versions so that you know that, okay, you will get these versions always. Yeah. Like, do you want things to randomly break when we install a new version and then force you to fix it to keep it up to date, which might be a good thing? Yes. Or do you want it to be the same forever? And then possibly several years from now have to do a big update mm. when mm. you need newer software. Both are yeah, anybody who options. has ever ever used a smartphone has probably run into a situation where especially if you have used for a longer time where you have certain version of let's say android or ios and then in the update they break everything and you can't use the apps you want it anymore like you updated the operating system mm -hmm. and everything breaks and you're mad about about it to the uh, makers of the software we want to avoid this so we want to keep as many versions of as possible on the background so you can still use them but you need to say uh which version you want because otherwise it will just get you the newest one usually mm -hmm. okay another yeah. example let's let's check the r version so you can see that there's plenty of these r versions and uh and you you will see that there's uh yeah, there's plenty of these. You can see that there's also like some inconsistencies with the module naming, and this is historical reasons. We have switched from module some module naming conventions, and we are going to deprecate many of these modules. And uh, and uh, when when we do this deprecation, we will give <laughs> we will let you know. Uh, you will you will definitely see when they are going to be deprecated. But usually, you will only need to. Uh, newest version, so module load R, and you will get the newest version of R. Yeah. And you can see that the, compared to MATLAB, this brings a huge bunch of other software with it. So MATLAB comes as one installed package by MATLAB people, and it will contain everything inside of it. But this R version is being compiled against uh, optimized versions of different operating system libraries and also operating system libraries that are not present in the in our uh, base operating system. So so they have to be brought in by the module as well, and and it does so. So you can see that there's a huge bunch of stuff, and you can actually see that here the version that we got wasn't actually the newest one. So you definitely should check what version you get when you try to load. Uh, you probably would mm -hmm. have wanted this one uh, when you loaded the module and, and you didn't get it. So it might yeah. be a good idea to make certain that you get what version you want. Yeah, so what happens so if you module load, load that? It would probably say that uh, switching a huge bunch of versions, let's see. Yeah, yeah. it will change a bunch of software on the background. Yeah. But what you probably want to do is just purge and start uh, loading the load the the version that you actually want. Yeah. This is probably the best way of going out. Yeah. So let's see. What else do we need to talk about here? I think we've covered most of the things. Mm. So if you are not at Alto, then the same general concept concepts will apply here. 
but there'll be different names for all the software. For example, it might be MATLAB uppercase or MATLAB with something else, or R might be called something else, and so on and so on. And that's something you'll need to find yourself. Yes, there's, there's also there's also a possibility of creating these module collections uh, where basically if you have certain bunch of software that you need to use, like you want to use, let's say, R and, and you want to do something else, uh, you might want to save this collection so that you will always, so let's say, let's say I, I want an R and a GCC and uh, I want to save this, uh, save my modules as a collection that I don't have to uh, remember what I want wanted uh, to build certain yeah. stuff. So you can save these collections. They might, uh, yeah, yeah. We, we don't need to go into much detail about it, but basically you can save these collections so that uh, you can re recollect them afterwards. If you have many of these version numbers that you need to set up, you, it might be a good idea to set these uh, co collections so that it makes it easier for you to load the same modules. Yeah. It used to be that loading some modules would take several minutes to resolve all of these dependencies, but um, most modules these days are a bit faster. So yeah, any final notes here? So we see at the bottom uh, there's a big reference of all of the different module commands, mm. which you may not need them right now, but know that you can get mm. this reference. One one thing you might want to try, uh, as well as looking at our documentation, you might want to uh, check module avail if you're using some software. So you will see here that there, there will be many of these dark, different folders, different sources, that we have a uh, software available, and and you will see that this list is quite uh, exhaustive. <laughs> so so there's huge bunch of software, and uh, I'd say that a lot of it uh, is uh, something that will be replicated at some point. But if you s uh, see a certain kind of software that you need, you might find it in this list as well. But it might be a good idea to also ask us. What versions do you want? Uh, what versions do you want to use, and so forth? Uh, yeah. Should I install it myself? Like this is, but there's it still continues. So uh, there's quite a bit of this software. So uh, you might find what you need here, or you might need to ask us. So um, yeah, just to let us know. End. Okay. Yeah, it's quite long. Yeah. So now we've got some exercises here. So. The people in the Zoom session, can you let me know by chat how long or how interesting you think these exercises would be? So, um, yeah, so here's, so this gives you some time to sort of play around with module and see what's available and what, like get used to it. If you don't care about modules, then this will be boring to you. And I'm sorry, but we need to go slowly for everyone that is following along. Um, how long do you think of a exercise session we should take here? Uh, I think maybe maybe uh, ten minutes or something. I'd I'd highly recommend like maybe checking at least exercises one and uh, uh, yeah, maybe well, maybe one and two at least, or maybe three as well to check check uh, at least the first ones. Like just get a hold of uh, th these commands, check their output, uh, or run run the commands as present. I just presented so that you get yeah. like this idea that how to load these modules because these are the interface you are going to have with the software. If otherwise, you will need to install everything yourself, and that's going to be a lot of hassle. And uh, it's highly recommended that you install these versions or use these versions because they're all already present there. So, but I'd say ten minutes. So maybe uh, twenty to twenty to uh, two. Yeah. Okay. Sounds good. Um. Yeah. So let's go to the Zoom sessions. 
Remember, you can continue using HackMD to ask questions. Please always scroll to the bottom and ask there, not making new things at the top where you might not see it. And good luck. If you don't finish everything, don't worry. At least numbers one and two is good.